Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So today we're going to be taking a look at Iridium Satellite Constellation. Now the Iridium Satellite Constellation provides L-band voice and data coverage to satellite phones, pages and other integrated transceivers over the entire Earth's surface. Now this was originally conceived by Barry Bertiger, Raymond Leopold and Ken Peterson in late 1987 and then it was protected by patents by Motorola in their names in 1988. It was then developed by Motorola on a fixed price contract from July 29th 1993 to November the 1st 1998 when the system became operational and commercially available. Now the constellation currently consists of 66 active satellites in orbit required for global coverage and there's additional spare satellites to serve just in case of failures. Now the satellites are in low earth orbit at a height of approximately 485 miles and an inclination of 86.4 degrees. Now the orbital velocity of the satellites is approximately 17,000 miles per hour. Now this animation this shows apart from it being quite trippy, this actually shows the coverage for every single Iridium satellite there is. Each of those circles is a footprint for each of the satellites and you'll notice that they overlap. Let's go ahead and have a look at how we can decode some of this data. So in order to start receiving data and decoding it from Iridium, we're gonna need two applications. Now, the operating system that I'm using here is Ubuntu. This is a Linux uh, distribution. And the toolkit, i.e. Iridium toolkit, has been designed to run on Linux. I don't believe there is actually any Windows versions at the moment. So the first application we're going to need is GR-Iridium. Now what this does, this actually connects to your SDR receiver and then obviously that goes off to your Iridium antenna. Uh, I'm currently using a patch antenna from SDR kits uh, that they've sent me. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it from. Um, I do have some other uh, type of equipment that I could use and I'm going to cover in another video. I've got some new Elec LNAs and filters. Uh, I'm just waiting on, uh, on an antenna at the moment for that system. But for now, now I'm going to be using the patch antenna I got from SDR kits. So let's get this GR-Iridium working because this is going to be the application which like I said before it connects to your SDR receiver and it takes a big chunk of Iridium data and it stores it all into a file. Um, unfortunately decoding and looking at the data from Iridium is not kind of real time. So if you can imagine what we're going to be doing we're going to use GR-Iridium to record what Iridium is transmitting and we're going to save all that information into a file. Now what we do, we use the GR Iridium application to do that. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and download this zip file. So as you can see here, I've got a GR Iridium master. Just going to extract that. This is what I need to rename it. And I'm just gonna drag that to my desktop. So here we are, this is the folder that we're in. Okay, so at this point I need to go over to terminal. Um, so we're just going to scroll down this page here and see what the commands are. Now, one of the prerequisites is that you do need GNU radio installed. I've already got it installed, but you can go ahead and do that yourself uh, before doing this part. So this is my terminal window and I'm just going to quickly see what folder we're in, just by typing ls. I'm gonna go to my desktop and we're gonna go to gr-iridium2 okay just make sure we've got some files in there so first thing we're going to do is create a directory called build so mkdir build we're going to cd into that build folder and then we're going to run a command called cmake and let it do its thing and then we're going to run make Okay, so there's two more commands that you need to do. You need to type in sudo make install. Uh, I'm just not gonna do this because I've already got it installed, but uh, you just hit enter then. And then the last one that you do is sudo ld config and hit enter. So if you haven't already, go ahead and plug in your SDR receiver. Now this next step is actually quite important. Um, if you look here on the documentation, you've got online with an SDR. What this means is it's gonna real time capture from the uh, Iridium satellite through your SDR receiver and record it to a file called output.bits, which is, which is here. 
Now in the examples folder, you'll see some config files or comp files. So you just need to choose which one that you're using. Now for me, I'm using an AirSpy. I'm just gonna open up the comp file just to show you something. Um, by default, this is uh, commented out. If like me, you're using an LNA, the, well, the LNA is actually built into the particular receiver that I'm using, the patch antenna, and it still needs the bias T, so you need to uncomment that so that it gives the bias T power to the SDR receiver. So this is the commander that we're gonna to use to start extracting data and recording it from Iridium. So this is the Iridium extractor application. Um, you'll see here in the middle of this command line, it says examples forward slash airspy.conf. Now that's because I'm using an airspy device. Now, like I showed you a moment ago in that examples folder, there's also one for HackRF. There's also one for a standard RTL SDR. So you just need to choose the correct conf file and type it in in this line here. So what we do now, if we hit enter, Okay, so what's happening now is the Iridium extractor, it's connected to the my Air Spy, and it's now pulling down data from the Iridium satellite and it's saving it into a file. That file is here called output bits. As you can see, it's 135K. If I just go back out and back in again, you'll see that it's actually jumped up. Now, obviously, the longer that you leave this, the more data it's gonna capture, and also the more things you're gonna be able to extract from it. Obviously, my antenna isn't positioned in the uh, best possible location at the moment because we're not getting 100% on here, but it should be enough to actually decode something. So I'm gonna let this run for uh, quite some time, and then when I come back to it, we can then go ahead and have a look to see what we can extract from it. So you're gonna to need to install Iridium Toolkit. I'll leave a link down in the description below, but you don't need to compile anything. Just click the clone or download, download as a zip, and uncompress it and put it in a folder called Iridium-Toolkit that will make it easy to find later on. The GitHub page obviously shows you all the different commands that you can use, but I'll go through some of those with you now. This is the Iridium parser uh, Python script, which is actually located within the Iridium Toolkit folder. So I'm just gonna run that. Now this can take a while, depending on how much data that you've actually received and it's saved. But once this is done, it will generate the output.past file, which will then be able to run the other tools, which is within Iridium toolkits. Okay, so once it's finished, we're now gonna wanna have a look to see what we can do with the data. Iridium toolkit comes with a couple of different tools, which allows you to extract some information from that output.past file. One of the cool features is actually to be able to listen to any of the audio that's been captured from the Iridium satellite while you've been recording it. So to do this, we're gonna run a stats.voc Python script. And you run this while you're in the Iridium-toolkits folder. This may take a while. And then you're presented with this kind of nice little graph. Now, all of these little red bits should indicate a little bit of audio. So let's see if we can find something. The way that it works is you left click at the start and then right click at the end. So take, take this little red bit here. I'm gonna click left and then right click. Okay, there's no audio in that one. Left, right, no. Nope. Oh, I don't know if you heard that. That said the driver is not answering. Let me see if I can turn this up a bit. Driver is not entering. Okay, let's see what else we can do. You cannot access an emergency responder using shortcuts such as 911, 112, or 000 in a current country location. You cannot access an emergency responder using shortcuts such as 911, 112, or 000 from your current country location. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we can obviously listen to any audio. It does sound a bit robotic, it's because it's being decoded using the MB codec. Something else that you need to do, and it's quite important if you wanna to listen to voice and decode voice, and that's you need to compile an MB decoder. Now on the GitHub page, you can see there's a couple of links, couple of ways of doing it, but the easiest by far is to actually download and use this Osmocom 
library. Simply copy this link here, git clone, and what we need to do is just paste it into our terminal window. Now we just need to cd into that folder. Uh, and if you take a look in there, there's another folder called codec. Once you're in codec, just type in the word make. And then what you can do is if you open up a file browser, you'll see the file here. It's around 57, 58K, this one here. And what you need to do is copy that and then paste it into your Iridium Toolkit root folder. So here, you can already see that I've already got mine here. That's what you need to do if you need to decode audio. Now there is another tool called Reassembler. Let's take a look at that. This is the command that you need to enter. And at the end, you can change where it says mode to something else. We've, the options we've got is IDA, lap, page, and message. So let's take a quick look at what IDA does. So IDA. Okay, so that's a whole load of information there. So IDA outputs UM layer three messages as hex. So what these are, these are responsible for the communication network resources, such as mobility, code format, call related management messages um, between you know various uh, network entities. So it's not the actual messages that we're you know looking to see if if someone send a, like a text message through through Iridium. Now the other portion of data that we can uh, reassemble is LAP LAP. So let me just type LAP and then hit enter. It will think about it for a while. Now what these are, these are GSM compatible L3 messages and GSM tap compatible. Now these are actually outputted as a .pcap, pcap file. You can open up the .pcap files using an application called Wireshark. So here we have the output .pcap, just double click on that. And this will show us a whole load of captured packets. Now I'm not going to go into uh, each of these and, and what they mean, primarily because it will take too long and secondly I'm not 100% sure myself. But uh, it's actually quite interesting. Each one of these is a different packet or different frame that it's decoded and it's actually a network packet. So you can select one and then you can go down here and have a little look at seeing what other information is available here. So I'll leave that up to you to go and have a play with. There may be some interesting information amongst all of that lot. Another feature of the Iridium Toolkit is the ability to reassemble paging requests. What we need to do first is go ahead and take a new snapshot of our out bits and pass that over to output.past. This can take quite some time depending on how large your file is. Okay, so once that's done, we can now go ahead and issue the reassembler command. And this time we're gonna select a page for paging alerts. Uh, there you go, there's a whole load of paging alerts. I'm not entirely sure what all of the numbers mean. What we've also got is the ability to look at page and messages. So it's the same command, but instead of page at the end, we type msg. Now, unfortunately, in this particular example, in the section that I've pulled off, it hasn't actually uh, brought down any messages, but maybe you might have better luck when, when you're doing it. So another cool thing that we can do is we can actually output a KML file, which contains either the satellite tracks or even a heat map of the sat positions and possible downlink positions as well. Now to do this, we need to run the following command and simply hit enter. Now what that will do, that will create an output.kml file, which should be here. So there we go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load that into Google Maps. So I'm gonna create a new map, import. I'm gonna drop in this KML file, and there we go. That is satellite tracks <laughs> that's gone past. Obviously I'm in the UK. So that's some satellite tracks that's uh, where the Iridium satellites have gone over. And the other one that we can do is a heat map. Let's generate that using this command. That's probably over in the other output.kml, but it should be okay. Let's import this one. 
Wow, okay, so this has got a bit more information on it. So there we go guys, that's a uh, overview and a look at how you can decode, how you can hack the data that's coming down from the Iridium satellites. Now I'm probably gonna be making some more videos on this and maybe going into something a little bit more uh, detailed. If you've got any questions or you wanna see something more specific and in more detail, please leave a note down in the comments section and I'll try and get back to you or I'll make a video on it. Until the next video guys, you take care and I'll see you in the next one.